Welcome back to John's Films, your home for DaVinci Resolve performance benchmarks and technology I think you need to know. Let's take a look at DaVinci Resolve running on Windows 10 versus Windows 11. And spoiler alert, there's something you need to do in Windows 11 for you to get the same performance you got in Windows 10. Here we are kicking off the benchmark. I'm checking to make sure there's no render cache, playback, proxy mode, or a fusion cache turned on. This will set a level playing field across all of the different tests. The way I ran this, I ran it in Windows 10, which you're seeing here, and then I ran it in Windows 11. And when I saw the results from that, I ran it in Windows 11 several times. As it turns out, Everything happens to be the same here in playback. You'll notice 24 frames a second, Windows 10 in the top left, 11 on the right, 11 fixed in the bottom right. As we work through this benchmark, it is 422 footage at 10 bit off an A7S3, 420 footage, the difference being there, the NVENC chip in the NVIDIA graphics card. I have an RTX 3090 here. It can't power decode or hardware decode the 422 footage. So this one, however, 420, these clips, here with the keyboard and with the mushrooms prior, they were running in the NVENC chip. As we look further down the timeline, I end up using some optical flow slow motion, which should heavily leverage the GPU. Here's some 60 frames per second A7S3 footage. I've also had some GoPro Max footage here. I'll have some DJI footage. As we get to the end, you'll see some fusion compositions. Here's one with just a glitch effect applied to the top of it. You'll notice each of them are stuttering to some extent, but they're all keeping up with the general flow. They are dropping frames, so what's happening is they're running through, and they're trying to keep up with the time codes, but they're dropping frames, and you can see to what degree they're stuttering. Frankly, for me, in actual editing, they function about the same. Here is that extremely painful optical flow slow motion. You can see Windows 10 and Windows 11 fixed have framed forward a couple of times, whereas the Windows 11 is kind of stuck. But again, this isn't something you're going to notice. At this point, it's painful enough that you're going to just let it render and cache, and then you'll be able to use it. Notice on the left, this was me checking, is it the CPU or the GPU? And bam, you can see there, Windows 10, it's definitely the GPU. Now we're going to get crazy. We'll add a little bit of a fusion overlay to this to really bring the pain. Notice window 11 fixed was stuck on something trying to render and it was the last one to get its rocket ship up. As it turns out, however, neither of them are gonna crank through it. Here's a three-dimensional particle system that I've put in here. It's two different scenes. Here's another one. This one's pretty CPU intensive on one or two cores. It does not spread out well even in 17.4.2. They're all finished, so you've effectively got the same performance running across each of them in the timeline. Let's find out what happens with render. I tested two target codecs, H.264 and H.265, and I rendered them in two ways in both Windows 10 and Windows 11. I rendered them with the CPU, that being native, and with a hardware accelerator in my graphics card, that being the NVENC chip in my NVIDIA GPU. Doing that, you can see some different times. Typically, the hardware acceleration will be significantly faster. In this case, though, with the fusion effects and the GPU-based effects, that became the throttle point rather than the encoding, and that is why you see these much closer together. As we move from Windows 10, where you see 9-minute and then 8-minute times, we move into Windows 11. I followed the standard Windows 11 upgrade path, and you can see that I ran into some significant issues. I even went back, checked for new updates, rebooted again, and continued to see 13-minute render times when it came to the NVENC hardware accelerated encoding. As we talked, this should be a little bit faster, but it appears the graphics drivers did not translate from Windows 10 to Windows 11, even though it was the same version of driver, the universal driver must have been holding on to the Windows 10 mapping, and there was some degradation in the access of the NVENC chip on the GPU. And with that explanation out of the way, you probably understand the fix is to update the GPU drivers. In my case, with an NVIDIA graphics card, I opened up my GeForce Experience application, checked for new drivers, there weren't any. I flipped it over to the studio driver, updated, flipped it back to the gaming driver, updated, and then I had a working system. 
this is helpful to you, please click subscribe. I'd love to have you around for future videos. And if this really helped, a like would go a long way. It really helps the channel and I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I hope this has helped you decide if it's time for you to move up to Windows 11. Please be aware there's a lot more to consider than just if DaVinci Resolve works. Does that capture card you got in 2002, does, does, it, does it still work? Don't know. You'll have to check it out. Thank you for watching. Have a great holiday season and have a great day.